Hey guys, this is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab and welcome back to a new video. Now, in this new video, which I call Let's Open Some Random Shit, I'll open and get you to see random shit. So, yeah, we've got random shit on the bench, ranging from routers or access points to toasters and shavers and mixers. So, yeah, let's get started. Well, let's get started with the first one. Well, this is one I always wanted to open uh, for years. And that's why I've got this uh, plate under here. It's a toaster, a bread toaster. It's a, uh, a Teufel, pretty good brand. And I think this is, well, is there a date code on here? No, I don't think there is. Maybe uh, inside we can view a date code, get the light correct. This is the type. Well, I think that it's around 20 years old or something. I mean, we've been using it for uh, quite a while here. Uh, we've been using it so much that the bread eject tray handle broke off. I 3D printed a new one and I think about a week later the filament gave up and it tripped our breakers. So yeah, that's a little bit unfortunate. But for us, it's a uh, Time to open it. Now there are uh, torques with a thing in the middle. I'm not sure how you call them. So let's get my trusty old screwdriver set out. Links in the description. It's uh, the one with a uh, tip before it. So let's uh, open it. I've always wondered how the timing mechanism is done. I mean. You just slide this and then you pull this back and it will work and then all of a sudden it goes like and it opens and it spews out the bread so yeah i've always wondered how that works internally and um, maybe it's a good idea to take off the, the outer shell first well they're all the same screws pretty uh, really nice Uh, this is a longer screw, but oh well. Let's take off these things and very sadly, oh, that didn't take a lot of effort. Take off my 3D printed thing as well. Now, I don't think there are any screws on this side, so there was only one on this side. I already removed this bottom screw, now there are two screws here and there are two holes over here. But I can't seem to see a screw in there. So let's first take out these two. I mean, yeah, it's pretty basic. They're probably Nichrome wires and they're just uh, providing, providing uh, 240 volts AC to and some kind of mechanism to, to switch it, but it's still interesting to see. Now, I'm expecting the thing to open or something. Oh, I think the power circuitry is located in this black thing over here, because that's where the timing mechanism is as well. Oh, and I can see something move. Get the light at the right angle. There's a screw in the middle. There you go. There's a screw. Over there. As I said, I'm basically expecting the thing to come apart, but if I see this, then we might need uh, the uh, magical unclipper to prevent uh, my nails from breaking. To well, you can clip it. But I'm not sure if this is strong enough. So, that was one big clip, but it's uh, it's coming around. It's coming around. There you go. So 
there it is. Well, I guess you could have also just opened this without removing the screws. Plus one for plastic clips. Now, this is of course why I have this plate under here. Oh, I was expecting a lot more to, uh, to fall out. There's breadcrumbs for over 20 years in here, so... Oh, you can see the mechanism. And you can see something moving over here. And I think that that's the... Let me check. Aha! Aha! Now I think I know how it works. You push it down and then you set the timer which just moves this thing up and down. As you can see. Not spectacular but... And this bends due to the heat I guess. And then when it bends down enough or goes up a little, it ejects the tray. Ah, when I was uh, using this, I always heard a click. That's that click. So that's the uh, some kind of a ledge. That's viewed a little bit more detail so you need to pay attention to this thing I was using it and I always heard a click that's that thing and then eventually it goes back down and then it ejects the tray really uh, really cool mechanical uh, well, engineering. It's the bending force that this one, that this has, that sets the time uh, of the uh, the bread that's inside there. So, oh, really cool. This, well, obviously, it's all mechanical, no electrical uh, things. While well, electricity is used to heat the filament that the bending uh, mechanism uses. Now, I think you can probably also remove this. But this is a lot harder to bend and to set free. There we go. As I said, I won't be using this anymore, so it doesn't matter if the plastic gets damaged. Oh, this, oh, now there's one screw over here. At the bottom there's one screw. Now, obviously, this is uh, the, the bridge that transfers the uh, electricity to the other side. Ooh. This is the other side of the uh, mechanism. I get, oh no, this is the uh, electricity part. Can we remove this, please? How do we, oh. There, if you, well this is, uh, I think this is right at the beginning of the uh, Plastic Fantastic uh, Century. AKA clips everywhere. But yeah, it works for 20 years, so. So this is your actual toaster. I guess that it's just this thing that goes into this slider and this bar that transfers the electricity or something and sets the mechanical force, I'm, I'm not sure. But yeah, it's, it's due to the bending of, uh, of this. Is that a filament? Can we take the filament out of here? 
Well, I think we can, but we need to remove this. They've really done effort to uh, seal this off well. So, oh, there you go. That's the seal, the, the metal enclosure. Now, of course, I'm wondering, does this still work? And I know that you are also asking that same question. Well, let's take it out. Obviously, I'm not going to uh, put 240 volts on this since it has already caused a short circuit. I don't think that uh, that will be a wise idea. So, I'm just going to put the power of my lab bench onto it and see if it uh, heats up. Yeah, it's drawing some current. Not much, but it's at 20 volts right now and it's drawing 0.7 amps. So it's really... Well, it's getting warm. I'm going to touch it, but... I do have a match laying around here. Maybe I can ignite the match with it. I don't think it's getting hot enough. No, it's not getting hot enough. So yeah, that's basically the, the toaster uh, in its entirety. So the reason why I got this plate was that I can do this. All the mess is gone. So now that the toaster is uh, gone, let's continue with this one. This is a, uh, a trimmer, a beard trimmer. It still works, but it's uh, it's empty. This is also a really good example of plastic fantastic. But I think this is well, height adjust. But I'm not really sure what height is it is adjusting. I don't see anything moving. So that might be the problem with it. So yeah, this is another good example of plastic things. And well, there's probably uh, some kind of uh, 18650 inside this thing. But I'm looking for a way to get in. I think that's around here somewhere or something. Oh, there are two clips over here. Hey, hey! This is the trimmer piece. Yeah, also plastic, so you can rip this right off. Oh, but I see some screws, so that's uh, this is a good start. I thought maybe there are screws in here, but there aren't. Oh, oops, uh, I'm afraid that if I, if I pull even harder that it will just shatter into pieces. Ah, just push on it, there you go, oh, and there is the battery. Well, that's basically the thing I'm most interested in. And I'm surprised that there even is a control board. Program ground, oh boy. Oh, there's the uh, the motor. Obviously, I want to remove it. Oh, well, let's take this off first, since this is clipped on here. And oh, I think that's also connected to. Can we? Oh, hey, that pops right off. See, it's also 
quite challenging to open these things because they're, well, they're obviously they're well engineered and uh, there are people who got paid to think about these things so you need them to be well engineered of course but so this is the adjustment mechanism aha uh -huh. but we do need to be oh Aha, uh -huh. I was about to say, we do need to be careful, because they're cute little batteries. Wow, I wasn't expecting that, I was expecting something like an uh, 18650 or something. Okay, wow, cool. This is the... Uh, turbo uh, thing. So, let's take this screw out. Now we don't even have to remove that, uh, that, that black slider thing. We can just leave it in there. And we've got ourselves a motor with a spring and control circuitry. Oh, oh. Now this is a shame. This thing is between the motor and the... Are we able to remove the motor like so? Yeah, there you go. Ah, there you go. Hey. Wow. Six. Does that mean there are six volts that needs to be applied to this thing? 15 volts? Whoa. So I guess that there's a big boost converter over here. It is conformal coated, as you can see by the shine of this thing, which is a good thing because oil will get all over there. So yeah, that's uh, another uh, neat device. But I'm still wondering, can we hack this? All right, so next up is this. Now, what's this? Well, if we take a closer look and at this side it says Canon. And what does Canon make apart from cameras? Well, you guessed it, printers. And to my surprise, I uh, got an old printer that was broken. And this thing came off of it. Now what's this? This is a 240 volts to 24 volts. AC to DC converter. Now it's quite big, but the thing that surprised me the most was this little pukey connector. This is the output. So 24 volts x 0.6 amps goes through here. Well, obviously the higher the voltage, the less wire resistance you will encounter. But again, it like wow. I wasn't expecting that to be in a uh, in a printer. I was expecting something bigger and something that's more robust to be in there. Now there is one screw inside here. It's quite big and I'm hoping that I've got the... Uh, I've got the biggest torques that I have inside here. I think this is too big. Oh, huh? It's like this one, it's a... Yes! Woo. Wow! What are the odds of this? That you've got something like this in your... Wow! See? Really amazing uh, toolkit is this. I mean, whoa! Look at this, this is just unbelievable. Uh, that was the only screw. And I think they're all plastic clips. Left out. It's really hard plastic it's it's i think this could be uh, become quite a challenge to open well that took a lot of effort my hands are hurting as you can see
And all I'm hoping at this point is that it doesn't slip back. Yeah, well, this is supposed to be like this. Yeah, it's a pretty basic power supply. Primary, secondary, big, uh, big cap, bridge rectifier. And that's it. Input, uh, input cap. Yeah, well. Oh, it goes to the bridge rectifier and then it goes through to the... So this still is a switch mode power supply. Now on to the next one, the... The, the Drape Tech Security Firewall. Yeah, Security Firewall. Oh, yeah. Got ourselves... Uh, well, I guess that this is uh, 2.4 gigahertz. I'm not guessing that this is uh, 5 gigahertz. So, got ourselves a few antennas. Uh, Draytech is really common in the Netherlands for device that you get with your internet service provider or ISP. But, yeah, let's have a look. And what's inside? Yeah, it's pretty basic. It's uh, oh, they're using an, uh, an add-on board for the ADSL or for the DSL. Whoa, they are doing quite a lot of power filtering. Let's take a closer look. Texas Instruments, Infineon, oh, Realtek, Lightlink. Yeah, that's uh, for the phone. Using these protection things for the phone. Uh, I think there are search protectors. Well, this board looks quite interesting. Let's take it out. There we go. Oh, they put a little plastic thing on there. How oh, nice. So, what's this called? This is Drytech ADSL 2 Plus Module V1. Cool. Uh, yeah, this is not more and just basic filtering. Oh, and there's a space for a port. So I guess they made a design oopsie or this board can also be used for another uh, model. That's quite common actually. And they're just using hardware identifiers to, uh, or software identifiers to identify what it should do. There is one thing that immediately caught my eye. Can you see it? Yeah, can you see it? Can you see it? This looks like a serial connector. Four pins, one VCC, one ground and one RX, one TX. This looks like it's able to come off. Oh, the antenna wires. They're gold connectors, so they didn't really cheap out as they did on uh, the screws. Well, gold is the uh, the best con conductor of electricity, obviously, so that's why they use uh, so much gold in uh, old electronics. Wow, this one was really loose. Since it was conducting really well. This looks uh, interesting to take off. ST, ooh. Some kind of memory or. Alpha. Well, for those playing at home, there we go. Yeah, it's. Uh, well, the board is quite unpopulated actually. And you can guess where the CPU is. It's over here and there could be a secondary 
CPU over here. But as you can see, it's unpopulated. And maybe that's for the extra bandwidth option, or maybe there's a pro edition with hardware based firewalling. I'm not sure. There, yeah. They didn't populate everything. As you can see, there's a footprint over here that's unpopulated. It's quite a, quite a board. Yeah, I'm guessing that uh, this would uh, run uh, Linux, probably Linux 2.6. So let's stay inside the networking area a little because I've got another thing that looks a lot more interesting. It has an, uh, an Altera Apex, well I guess it's an FPGA or a COPD on it. And HDSL, super high SDSL uh, I'm guessing. No, I'm guessing that this would be used in some kind of data center. Cisco Systems Copyright 2000, wow. This was state of the art back then, state of the art. There are lots and lots and lots of components on the bottom. Though well, this is, well, I was about to say this is mostly all analog, but that's not true since there are two massive chips on here. But yeah, yeah DSL is not digital. Um, made by Cisco. I guess that this is some kind of uh, logic level switcher. Might be some memory over here. And it's a pretty cool thing. There are a few, well, I guess that there are also a few EEPROM for the uh, for the COPD or FPJ code to be stored on this. And if we take a look at the bottom, that's one thing that a little bit outdated I think right now and take a flashlight and put it underneath there let's first zoom in for you one two three you can make that up as well you can feel five and a six so this is a six layer board massive six layers wow now that what you call state of the art for the 2000s that's massive, man. This is really cool. I, I'm, I think that this goes into some kind of a switch or something. Because this, well, I don't think that this will go into a, uh, into a computer. Well, it might, but... So let's move on to the final thing that is a little more household related and is a little dusty and dirty. It's this mixer. Oh, it broke. Oh, it falls apart. But what was interesting for me is that they used... Well, I think this is a triac. Or it's a... Use some kind of voltage divider or something. I mean, and there's a uh, trimmer over here. And that connects to a resistor. That resistor connects to the middle pin of this TO22 package. And so this should be a DC motor then. No, that's through 30 volts. This motor is gone. It's all black, so this isn't worth taking out uh, even further. So yeah, that's it for this uh, episode. I hope you like this uh, video in between. If you've got any ideas on what I should take apart, uh, please let me know. Also let me know if you like this segment. Uh, also a little update, not much of an update, but a little update on Project Windmill. The items that I ordered were undeliverable and they say they will be deliverable by the end of November. That had changed. They say it's now deliverable by the 12th of October, which is almost there. So I'm hoping that I can continue with Project Windmill very soon, because I've still got that PCB laying around. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. 
Bye. Hey guys, this is Tim. I hope you liked that video. If you want to see more, please make sure to subscribe. Uh, you can also share the video with your friends and hit that like button. I'll see you in the next one.